Hello and welcome to Star Citizen Sunday with me, Ryan, aka Mac. This is a weekly show which covers everything from the world of Star Citizen over the past week. Links to everything discussed can be found in the description below, so let's get on with it. This week we talk about the Polaris and the Javelin, we hear about planetary audio, plus we see the new dynamic cameras coming soon. So first up was Around the Verse, this was coming from the UK. We started with Sandy and Forrest. Forrest said 2.6 is shaping up, 3.0 is gearing up fast and Squadron 42 is moving full steam ahead. From there we had a look and a talk about the RSI Polaris. Now this is an RSI ship as we know, it has aggressive angles. It's newer than the RSI ship, so they're breaking away from the normal, sort of from the norm quite, just slightly, not too great. But it can carry a small fighter, it can be quick, deliver a torpedo payload, and then get out of there. It's specifically made to be focused as possible as, as getting in, destroying, and then getting out. It's got the typical faceted cockpit with robust metal framework, as RSI is known for. We did get to see a nice interior of the cockpit, we've seen this before, it's a nice sort of concept art. It's got a recessed bunker style stations as well, so the captain keep, can keep an eye on them, making sure they're not on Facebook or whatever. Plus a gangway right in front of the, the captain so that he can walk down the gangway and have a look out for better viewing, sort of a three, sort of a, maybe a 180 viewing angle as they approach planets and so forth. That'll just be awesome. On the hangar, the doors open and then the floor rises up and obviously once the ship has landed, then it will lower back down again and the, the doors will close up. It's got a mess room which also acts as living quarters, you can play pool, the bunk area is actually through the window we see there. Now the RSI has these new slanted style corridor aesthetics, we'll hear more about this on uh, Reverse the Verse, but that is one thing that's going to really stand out with RSI. You're also able to fire four of the biggest style missiles, the torpedoes, at once, which is a massive payload, especially if you're against a little Aurora, not that you would use so many missiles. Anyway, the missile room, or the, the torpedo room, is what we see here with the loading mechanism. It does look very big. It looks like you'll need people attending this all the time. It'll have a distinctive silhouette which will send shivers if anyone sees them and they're, you know, they're not following the law, which is just awesome. But they say it's something you would want in your fleet. It's a mid to large cap ship killer. So if you are interested in using combat and so forth, then I think a Polaris is something you will need. Anyway, from there, they talked about the dynamic in-game camera. Now, this is, this is going to be quite new. It'll vary depending on FPS or ships, but they want players to have more control of the camera, better controls and the movement, so that it, it can make more cinematic shots and, and videos. 2.6 should bring more camera control. I'm not, I doubt it'll be all of the camera controls. But you'll be able to, to create your own angle, so you can go to the angle that you want, Save that and then that will be your preset camera angle when you hit that button to change camera modes. So you can literally set any any camera angle you want and save it so that when you want to switch to it, you can switch to it on the fly. That is awesome and I really like that. It will help so much more with cinematography and so forth. Also, you can have lens size control. You can change the field of view. So, so much more coming to these cameras. They want to get away from the camera on a stick style view. They've also added operator shake which is kind of a gentle movement, which, you know, gives it more of a dynamic uh, feel like it's real. They give the camera a shake depending on the environment, so if you're in an explosion, the camera will shake quite violently. Uh, and also the camera will catch up if you accelerate quickly, giving it again a more cinematic view. This is awesome stuff. It's only small and it's very minor, but it will help so much for content creators. So talking about the Homestead demo and the Ursa Rover in particular, they say the Ursa is cool because you can have multiple people or four standard cargo units on the ground. Visual effects have added dust and the lights that reflect to the dust from the wheels. That just looks awesome. It will behave differently uh, depending on the materials you're driving on. So if you're driving on sand compared to concrete, it will react differently. They need some work for the physics still. It's not 100%. I'm sure gravity on planets will affect it differently too, but to what extent is unsure yet. Uh, lots of plans for the vehicle variants. The Ursa will come for 3.0. It's going to be amazing, it's 3.0. Oh, sends shivers down my spines every time I think about it. Down my spines? I have multiple spines. Anyway, in ship shape, they showed the destroyed Javelin and the work it took to do it. They take a huge capital ship and then just make it look crashed into a planet as if it's been there for years. Again, we'll hear more about this on RTV. There was a very strong Star Wars 7 link, but it also has uh, you know, images of like Mad Max. That's the inspiration they went with. There's lots we didn't see as well in this ship, like beds, radios, uh, the personal touches from the ship dwellers. But also something they pointed out is how the sand will be built up on the surfaces. 
as, as well as rust. So on the exterior, it will be sandy. They kind of get the impression that the exterior will be treated so that it won't rust. Whereas the interior, when it's so when you're walking around the interiors of these ships that are exposed, they'll be rusty. Whereas on the outside, it'll all be sand built up. Very nice. Anyway, the, uh, the most of the team working on the ships were environmental artists before, so they have a good experience on creating this environment rather than just it being a ship. There is a day-night cycle. Not sure how long a day would last on this planet as the star is not finalised. Uh, so, you know, knowing where the sun will be at certain times of day is still to be determined. But they know now how to do these damaged ships and it will make it much easier for the future. So for sound design, variations of the wind's intensity will differ for the sandstorm. So as it starts approaching, you will get different sounds, different, uh, especially in the environment you're in. So if you're in the ship, you'll hear metal debris when the wind gets high. And then when it starts lowering down again, you know, those sounds will, will disappear. And I'm just going to do it through here. They want to populate with as many sounds as possible, keeping natural elements to drive the audio. It's hard to procedurally generate sounds, but they need that because obviously these planets are so huge, having to die, like, add sounds by hand is just not an option. The javelin has many trigger spots, as we can see. As the storm gets closer, you get more sounds. You will hear the ship rattling when the, sound hit, when the storm hits. You'll hear more ambient sounds when the storm's gone away again, it'll be calmer. But there, again, there's so much more of this in RTV, so do stay tuned for that as it'll delve further into this. So the community update, Star Citizen and Turbulent won the Cutting Edge Award for the work they did on the Ark Star Map. The Golden Joystick Awards is coming around and they have been nominated for Most Wanted Game of the Year. So go and vote. There is a, There should be a link in the, in the description. If not, do shout at me in the comments. This will end on the 31st of October, so there's not long to go. Currently, guys, there's a free flight for all who sign up to Star Citizen, you don't need to buy anything, you just need to sign up and then you can download the game and you will be given a, a Hornet F7M to try out. Very, very cool ship. I highly suggest just downloading it, giving it a go, seeing how your computer handles it, seeing how you like the game. Do use my referral code though, as this will give you 5,000 currency credits, so United Earth credits for when you do finally pledge and you can... Use them to, for whatever you want. Most valuable post goes to Rice Maiden for his laser cut birch plywood ships. Awesome stuff. Maybe we'll have him on Citizens of the Verse one day. And also the October subscriber town hall will be live on Twitch coming this next week. So do tune in for that. Anyway, this was Around the Verse. Let me know your thoughts. So in usual fashion, following on to Reverse the Verse, we recap over what we saw in Around the Verse. The first person we spoke to is called Matteo Chukwani. And he's a junior sound designer talking about the environmental sounds. So we, we touch more on this. The game obviously starts silent. There are no sounds when, when the game is created. Sound designers need to create them and to populate the game with sounds and noises throughout the verse. In the game already, this Matteo has worked on the Avenger, the Giant Scout, ambient and foily sounds. Now the sandstorm, he says, sound needs to come from the visual effects as well. So what you're seeing should represent it in the, in the sound. But it also needs to depend on where you are. So I said in ATV, if you're in a javelin, then you'll get metal sounds. So other places will have trigger spots ready for when the storm hits in these different biomes. If you give like a really strong gust of wind, then the wind will determine what sounds you hear. So some sounds will require stronger wind or stronger gusts before they will trigger. Now they do have plans to go back over some of the older ships due to the new uh, audio perimeters and add more sounds. So giving the player more feedback. For example, engine strains if you're trying to turn too much, if you're trying to brake or accelerate too hard. 90% of the sounds will be p positional. Um, they're using WYs for the audio tech, which will help and work with all, all speaker setups. Obviously, the better speaker setup you can get, the better you will appreciate them or the more you will. When it comes to ships like the Jean Scout, they need to create sort of audio and sounds that people have never heard before, sort of alien sounds. Um, and this particular designer likes glitchy sounds using synthesizers. The, the Jean Scout needed to sound organic, so he recorded squishing sounds from dog food and vegetables, you know, the work they do to get these sound to us. But how procedural sounds will work on different biomes is, is the tech isn't quite there yet. They are working on it, but each trigger spot can have different sounds depending on the weather, the time of day. They're trying to make it very, very dynamic. So, for example, t day and night cycles, ambient sounds will change due to temperature changes and so forth. So you'll get different sounds in the daytime when it's hotter, 
compared to the night time because you know maybe different animals or you know metal and things contract and so forth very very in depth and they are going to you know like like the whole of the game they're going to such depth to try and create this and make it sound awesome now i i don't know when they're going to get this tech sorted but they need it because obviously these planets are huge they cannot go around each part of the planet and add these sounds it needs to be procedural or di you know able to be procedurated is that a word i don't know anyway uh, we spoke to nathan Deersley after that who's the vehicle art director we know him quite a lot now he's been on atv rtv for three i think the third time for rtv he says there's lots of ships coming on board for the pu lots of work on legacy ships work getting done for ship items to get more multi-crew functionality as well the primary focus is bringing everything to a certain standard making sure that the game runs better the older ships, he says, are very expensive, but not in cost, but in terms of resources. So optimizations and so forth, they, you know, they require a lot more memory to, to function. The Cutlass is also ha has its rework in progress. The 300 series is also in the pipeline. So what we saw on the planet side with the Javelin Wreck is all work in progress. It's not 100%, but it is all scalable. He says when it comes to planets, we'll be, we'll, there'll, be there'll be many points of interest planet side, but... They're not always going to seem. You're not always going to see massive shipwrecks just strewn across the surface. Sometimes you will just see a bunker door, and as you enter that and walk around it, you'll realise it's a ship which has been buried by the sand, which is just incredible. The story is very important for these derelict ships, and they want to have a feeling of history. So, telling ambient stories, you may find maybe a dead guy or a skeleton in a vent, and you'll find out why he was in that vent. Like we saw with these these ships, someone has gone in. They've taken over the ship. They're living there now. They're not just going to be wrecks in the middle of nowhere waiting for people to salvage them. They're going to have stories, people living in them, uh, maybe a history behind it. If you want to explore that history, you can do. If you want to ignore it and just get all the, the salvage you can, you can do. It's up to yourselves. Squadron 42 will allow for a lot of these sort of personal touches, especially in the ships, just making them feel lived in. We will be able to decorate our own ships with things like fluffy dice or bobbleheads um, or postcards. This has been confirmed a while ago. Uh, and also, if you don't clean your ship, then it will begin to get dirty and fill it with rubbish. Uh, they have systems of this in place. That's just awesome. I know a lot of people may not like that. They may not think like the idea of going away for a month, coming back and there's like dirty rubbish everywhere. But I think it's awesome because I will pro practically live in the game. Anyway, the first question for this guy was uh, about the Redeemer and where, when, what, how. He says there's a lot of stuff for ships that were not resolved when that was created. Now the style guides and ship pipeline is very mature. They can address them. That will come along once the guy who is working on, who well, who created it, because they employ him now, is working on Squadron 42 ships. When he's finished with those ships, he'll come back and sort the Redeemer out. Next question, will Starfarer Captain's Quarters get a chair? And yes, it was kind of an ongoing joke, not to not put one in, but it just wasn't there. So it won't take long to fix it, it'll come soon enough. Third question, any chance of seeing the Javelin in its normal state soon? Now this is exciting, he says, he says you'll have to ask Qu uh, Chris, they have two internal areas left to do in the Javelin, one of them is being the cargo bay, which is quite significant, so that's going to take a bit of time, but they have a lift at the front and the back for each floor, they have glass in the, in the lift so you can look out, that's going to be awesome, but after the two areas are sorted, then they need to optimise it, make it flight ready, so on and so forth. It's, it's, there's a lot of work to do, but it's very, very close, and for a, a, a ship... That size, I think it's about 345 metres. Obviously, it takes time, but they are getting through it very quickly. Now, the Idris and the Javelin are both Aegis. Does the Idris work help for the Javelin? And they say, yes, the style guides, the archetypes, really help to block out the ship using the other assets, but then they alter parts of it to make it look, you know, less similar. Uh, he says that 40% of the ships reuse assets using the guides, and then the other 60% is what makes that ship unique and personal to that ship which is a great way of looking at it. So a final question is to do with the Polaris. It's an RSI line. Has the RSI capital ship design started? And if you don't know, the Bengal carrier is an RSI ship. We've seen so much of it already. The bridge itself is four stories high, which I found very impressive. But anyway, the, it's got corridors, a ready room, habitation, toilet showers. They've got lots of assets ready. If you spawn facing an RSI wall, you will know within about two seconds it's RSI. The RSI angles will either be 30% away from you or towards you. So you should be able to tell quite instantly, what, you know, the ship that you're in. The Polaris itself will take the RSI stuff and see how far they get. So, you know, 40% of it will be blocked out using what they have already to get it quite quickly complete. And then the next 60% will just be personalizing it and making it look like a Polaris. Finally, Banu stuff, he says, is on the horizon. The first part of it will take longer due to creating the unique look. They don't have the style guides for Banu yet. But after that, it just gets easier for creating these Banu ships. 
this guy is awesome. Anyway, that was Reverse the Verse. Let me know your thoughts. So for those of you who don't know, myself and Miserable G have started a new fortnightly podcast live on Twitch where we chat to the talented community about what they do and how they do it. Episode 1 was last Friday and can be seen on Miserable's channel right now. The link is in the description. I will post it to my channel myself on Monday if you'd rather wait, but you can watch it now on his. Let us know what you think. We have big plans for episode 2. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Also, this week there was a new Far From Home post titled Nothing For Granted, where old Jagger discusses how his recent ship upgrade saved him from a dangerous trap. Lawmaker's Guide is back this week as well, looking at the pyro system. And finally, the new Jump Point is available for RSI subscribers. So, that brings us to the end of the show. Thank you for watching and thank you to our subscribers, plus a massive thank you to our patrons as you make this possible. If you like what we do and want to help us make it better, follow the link in the description to our Patreon page to learn more. Um, yeah. And yeah, basically what uh, Citizens of the Verse is, is we are, instead of focusing solely on the game, um, we're going to focus on the community. So you've got a lot of uh, podcasts. matter, but then you wouldn't really need to, to use it. You did say you will want a friend or AI crew or both. So next question, can we land the Polaris and can it carry or deploy a rover? And they say it can land and the cargo holds.